Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. I want to wish everyone a very blessed Thanksgiving this year. We're going to talk a little bit about that, and I think that uh, it's probably senseless to talk about things like female turkeys don't gobble. It's probably more interesting to talk about the event that Americans commonly call the first Thanksgiving, which was celebrated by the pilgrims after their harvest in the New World in November of 1621. That's been 402 years ago. 402 years. This feast lasted three days and was attended by 90 uh, Native American uh, Indians, uh, Native Americans, uh, and 53 survivors of the Mayflower, uh, the Pilgrims. Uh, it is definitely a religious holiday. It's rooted in the Judeo-Christian tradition of our country, although the, uh, the secularism of our present culture may have turned the focus more to, to feasting, uh, football, uh, family gatherings. Uh, uh, we must not forget that the history and the religious significance of this American holiday uh, is uh, something to keep in mind. The U.S. Department of Agriculture estimates that Americans consume more than 46 million turkeys on Thanksgiving Day each year. Your Bible records seven times, seven times where Jesus gave thanks. I don't have time to go through those with you today, but I want to read Psalm 95. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to Him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. Uh, Strong's Greek, uh, 2168. Uh, I, I see 38 occurrences of the word, and so I've chosen a few verses for review. That word, uh, thanksgiving, it's where we get the word Eucharist. It's uh, Eucharisteo. Um, it is, uh, from, it's a compound word from two words, meaning good and grace. So properly, it means good grace. Uh, God's grace. Uh, giving thanks. Literally, it's thankful for God's good grace. That's what it is. And boy, are we, or you should be. I know I am. In the Pauline epistles, where we spend most of it's the very lifeblood of the church, the first occurrence is, is in Romans chapter 14, and it's thanking God. It talks about he that regards the day re regards it uh, unto the Lord, and he that regards not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. Uh, he that eats, eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. And he that does not eat to the Lord, he eateth not, and he gives God thanks. In other words, what is done both by one and the other is done unto the Lord. You have a weaker brother uh, that esteems uh, you know, one day above another and regards the Passover, the Pentecost, the Feast of Tabernacles, a new moon, or a seventh-day Sabbath. He does it in obedience to the commands of the Lord, which he thinks are still binding, not knowing that they are disannulled by Christ, and the uh, worship performed by Him on any of those days is done in the name and strength of the Lord with a view to His glory and as believing it was pleasing in His sight. And whether He's right or wrong, uh, it is to the Lord that He does it, and to His own Master He stands or falls. We need to keep that in mind. He that regardeth not the day, okay, believing it is the will of the Lord that all, all the distinctions of days should, should cease and that the law of commandment is uh, as contained in ordinances respecting uh, such Jewish days is abolished by the Lord Jesus Christ. That so He came and He fulfilled the law and that it is to the honor, uh, 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 the Lord not, to, it's, it's honoring to the Lord to not observe them, okay? For to regard the days of the Feast of Tabernacles is 
is, is to say that you know, the, the word is not tabernacled among us and to observe the days of the Passover is virtually to deny that our Passover is sacrificed for us and uh, so on and so forth. You know, to, to keep the day of Pentecost is, uh, you know, that the first fruits, you're saying that the first fruits of the Spirit have, have not been given. Uh, you know, it's, you, re, re, you regard a new moon, uh, or you don't regard a new moon. Uh, you have two, you always have a weaker brother and a stronger brother. And, uh, for the sake of, of unity, we don't, uh, we don't, we just don't beat each other up, you know, over that matter. Uh, we don't all have the same faith. It is to his own master that he stands or falls. So both believe that the Lord is pleased by their behavior. And uh, I think the giving of thanks is, is, is quite remarkable among Christians. Uh, in 1 Corinthians uh, 1, chapter 1, thanking God, I always thank my God for you because of the grace that He's given you in Christ Jesus. Uh, also in the first chapter of 1 Corinthians, th thanking God, I thank God that I baptize none of you, but Crispus and Gaius. You, you always seem to find it in the context of thanking God. Uh, thanking God for if, if, if by grace... Uh, if I by grace be a partaker, why am, am I evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? Uh, you know, it's, that's similar to the first occurrence. Uh, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things uh, edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Uh, Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. Conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and you be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you, eat, asking no question for conscience sake. But if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols, Eat not for his sake that showed it, and for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Uh, conscious, conscience sake. Not, not your own conscience, but the conscience of the other brother. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? Thanksgiving is no time for Christians to be apart in, in any sense of, of the term. What's, uh, whatsoever. It doesn't matter what their belief system is. It doesn't matter what their differences are. Uh, whatever we do, whether we eat or drink, whatever we do, we do it all to the glory of God. We don't give any offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Paul says, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved, they may be delivered. In the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, we read, And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Communion. I've spoken a lot about that. Uh, feasting on Christ in the Word. It's not, the importance is not in the elements as much as it is the reality of it. Uh, we have the Son thanking the Father for His own sacrifice on our behalf. His death so that we might live. Now, how far should I go in thanking God? Well, we'll see here in a, in a, in a little bit. And when he had given thanks, the text says, he broke it and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. This do in remembrance of me. Dearly beloved, we're not atheists. Okay? We are not atheists. It's like one told me once, you know, well, we don't need some construct to help us cope with life, okay? God is inside each of us, and it upsets me to see you fighting and killing yourselves, you Christians, you know, because you don't understand that. 
Dearly beloved, there is no such thing as an atheist Thanksgiving. I don't, I don't know who they're giving thanks to. Uh, kind of have to scratch your head over that one. And then in 2 Corinthians 1.11, an easy verse to remember, it's, that's thanking God. The, the apostle ascribes their deliverance solely to God. He makes note of the prayers of the saints uh, for them as, as means of their obtaining it. Your prayers are, for one another are important. It was a very praiseworthy practice in the church in, in, of, in the past. It's worthy of imitation to pray for the ministers of the gospel, especially when under affliction and persecution. Prayer is very effectual when it comes to the, the righteous man. Like the angel delivering Peter from prison, the chains fell off. You know, the saints were praying. Just You can read about that in Acts chapter 5. And the prayers of those righteous ones were heard by God and often effectual as it concerned their deliverance. He, that is God through Paul, God's the author, he attributes much to the prayers of the faithful. Deliverance, folks, ought to be, to, ought to be precious to us because it results in God being glorified. And then finally, 1 Thessalonians 5.18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. you. And note the word everything. Everything. In everything give thanks. Everything. Okay, well, my house burned down. Okay, so I'm thanking God my house burned down. No, you're not thanking God your house burned down. Uh well, oh, but it says in everything give thanks for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So I, I slipped and fell on the ice and I broke my leg. So thank you, Lord, that I broke my leg. No, that's not what that's saying. You're not thanking God for, I, I, you know, I don't know, Yellowstone blew up, okay? So I, I just thank God that Yellowstone blew up. Dearly beloved, listen. The text says, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I don't believe for a second that God is telling you that you ought to give thanks for you having cancer or, or you, you ought to give thanks for your, your wife leaving you or your husband leaving you or you, you should give thanks that you got fired. Okay, It's not what happened that you're giving thanks for. It's not that you're giving thanks for bad things. Like, you know, just, we're just always constantly thanking Him for all the tragedies in our life. That's not what the text is saying. What the text is saying, dearly beloved, what we give thanks for is the circumstances that we're going through. There's a big difference, okay? Uh, let's say I get fired. I lose my job, okay? It's not that I'm giving thanks for losing my job. I'm giving thanks for, that, for God designing this circumstance in my life, bringing this about in which I have to go, some, some of tragedy, and I put that in quotes, that we have to go through, that God intended that we go through for our good. We're thanking God for that. For, it's not as much that we're thanking Him for the tragedy that occurred, as it is that we're thanking Him for us, how we go through that. It's, it's kind of hard for me to put into words. I, if, if, we're, if we're giving thanks in all things, that includes all things, then it, what that says is it says that no matter what occurs in your life from a negative standpoint, if, you know, if it appears to be a tragedy, if it appears to be something very horrible and even horrific, that we're to give thanks for, for, God, for that circumstance. These events, these circumstances, these so-called tragedies, all, whether they're good, whether, whether they're bad, whatever we go through, whether it's good or bad, is designed by our sovereign God to bring us from well, to grow us in grace and knowledge of Him. They are constructed, designed by a sovereign God to bring us 
into a, a greater state of maturity and trust in Him. If you can look at all of the tragic events in your life as, as being designed by God, that's one thing. And allowed by God for your good, for your ultimate good, because He doesn't allow anything to touch your life except it be for your ultimate good. That's one thing. But to look at all that is, you know, from just think of the opposite here, you know. Uh, well, this shouldn't, that shouldn't have happened. Uh, you know, uh, that, it was my fault. Uh, God expected me to, to do better, different, you know, so I failed. Or, or even worse, you know, I have a God who doesn't really love me, who allows this, who did allow this awful circumstance to take place. Well, it must have been, I must have done something wrong to deserve that. God didn't intend that that occur. Dearly beloved, I can't emphasize it enough. God doesn't allow anything to touch your life except it be for your ultimate good. Nothing. Everything in the Christian's life is designed to bring glory and honor to God. And what brings glory and honor to God? In trusting Him that what we're going through, He's got our back. That He's got our best in mind. It doesn't matter what it is. And I understand how difficult that that can be extremely difficult Let's, you know you lose a loved one uh, you know you lose your job uh, you become destitute perhaps you're homeless you are not there is no such thing as a forgotten child of God and that's what I want to leave you with this Thanksgiving rest in him we love you we truly do until next time this is Steve thanks for watching